So I mentioned in another vlog that I am participating in the Pop Sugar 2016 reading challenge. So I'm Tree and this is the library. So I'm already into my second book of the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge. I finished The Last Unicorn yesterday, which was my classic from the 20th century. So this is kind of going to be what I'm reading, what I'm planning to read, sort of, mostly, kind of. And to be fair, I am trying to do a lot of this out of my current TBR because it is huge and expansive and I really need to read some of these books. Number number one, based on a fairy tale. I have two options that I haven't decided upon yet. I have Cinder, which a myriad of people love this series, and I am intrigued by the thought of it, but I'm not entirely sure because I've seen a lot of mixed reviews about it. Or um, Red Riding Hood, which they made into a movie. I think this is what that one is. Yes, they made it into a movie. So, again, you know, mixed things. But they are things that I have that need to be read that, you know, are fairy tales. National Book Award winner. I spent a lot of time going through the last, I don't know, 60 years of these trying to make a decision, and wow, is there a lot of Faulkner and Steinbeck. So I've decided on In America by Susan Sontag, which I do not currently own or possess a copy of in any way, shape, or form. Why a bestseller? I'm leaning towards... I'm leaning towards We Are Liars, The Library of Souls, or The Mermaid Sister. None of which I currently own. So there you go. A book I haven't read since high school. I'm going to do Anne of Green Gables. I remember really, really liking the series. I read the first three books of them when I was... I read them a couple of times. The last time was in high school. So, yes. A book set in my home state. I am from Illinois originally. I live in Wisconsin now. But I, and I thought, well, I could read one of the Dresden File books I haven't, Dresden Files books I haven't read because they take place in Chicago, which is funny since I went to school in Chicago at one point, so I, like, know where they're talking about a lot of times, even when they don't necessarily say where they are. But I'm going to do Dandelion Wine by Ray Bradbury. I haven't read a whole lot of Ray Bradbury. Fahrenheit 451 just did not do it for me. But my mom really liked Dandelion Wine, so I thought I'd give that a shot. A book translated into English. I'm going to read House of the Spirits, which is a book I've always wanted to read, so it works. It's uh, magical realism. Bleh. Magical realism translated from Spanish. Romance set in the future, which I'm just like, I don't even know what this means. So I'm leaning towards the time traveler's wife, just because of there is... There is a future romance, but it, like, moves through time weirdly and stuff. And I have, honestly, I have no urge to read this read this book, but the author is a book artist, so I figure, you know, at least book artist. Book set in Europe, Circle of Friends, uh, set in Ireland, and I really, the movie was one of my favorite movies when I was in high school, so. A book under 150 pages. I am going to do The Cant Canterville Ghost by Oscar Wilde. Because, A, who doesn't need more Oscar Wilde in their life, and, was that A or B? A, who doesn't need more Oscar Wilde in their life, and B, The Canterville Ghost is a great story. I do have a backup in The Guise of the Matisse Stories by A.S. Bayat. It's also go potentially my backup for the book with a blue cover. Become A book becoming a movie in 2016. Ready Player One. I, I, it's supposed to be being, be, it's supposed to be being made into a movie this year, so we're reading that. I have a copy of it, and I started reading it yesterday, so, and so far I am enjoying it. A book that was recommended to me by somebody who I just met. I'm going to read, as I totally lose her name, 
and I, I will put it down here because I'm going to invariably mess it up. Um, Leah Clifford, I want to say, and it's the Mortal Touch. Um, I met her and her friend Amber at NerdCon, and her friend Amber totally recommended it to me. And yeah, we're going to give it a shot. Self-improvement book. Which I'm like, why? Why must we read self-improvement book? But okay. And um, I am going to read The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer, which I have all sorts of issues with Amanda Palmer, but I keep thinking, you know, if Neil Gaiman likes her, there's got to be something okay about her somewhere. A book I can finish in a day. Let's put this out here that I am an incredibly slow reader, so this is very daunting to me. It's one of those wonderful things about being dyslexic. Either you read really, really fast or you read really, really slow. I am a slow reader. But I'm going to read Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them because it's tiny. And it looks like this. And I have never re read it before. I've had this book for years and years and years, as you can tell by the patinaing on the pages, and I've never read it. So there you go. A book written by a celebrity, which again is one of those things I have no urge to do, but okay. So I'm going to read Say Yes by Amy Poehler. Political memoir. I have like an entire list of possible books for this, but these are the two books I own that are on that list. The Odyssey of the Abraham Lincoln Brigade, Americans in the Spanish Civil War, which, um, I took a class on this in my undergrad, and Peter Carroll was actually the professor's best friend, and to the point where the professor's youngest son was named after Peter Carroll. So that's kind of cool, but it's also pretty big. So I also have, from the same class, um, Spain's Cause Was Mine, a memoir of an American medic in the Spanish Civil War, and the foreword is by Peter Carroll. Peter Carroll's, like, at what well, at the time is, is, was literally the, the, the expert on the subject of the anti American anti-fascist who pers who participated in the Spanish Civil War. And if you don't know anything about the Spanish Civil War or the American p participation in it, go find out about it. Because basically World War II could not have happened if it hadn't been for Sp the Spanish Civil War and the American government doing, American government, Europe, uh, pfft, American government, England, and France basically doing nothing to help the democratically elected socialist government of Spain against the fascists being funded by Hitler and Mussolini. It's fascinating. It's awful. It's traumatic. Learn about it. It's so interesting. A book that's 100 years older than me. I'm going to read Carmilla by La Fanu. Lesbian Vampires, a book that's more, hundred, more than 600 pages, and it's kind of actually serving double duty as on a smaller book challenge as a book that intimidates me, and that's, um, that's Middlemarch. It's scary. It's not Clarissa Long, but it's scary long. <sighs> Oprah Book Club book. Um, I'm going to do 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia... Marquez. Yes, I have a cheat sheet. Marquez, it's a book I've always wanted to read, so excuse. Sci-fi novel, The Martian. I'm so reading The Martian. <laughs> I know the science and it's kind of sucky and stuff, but I don't care. I'm going to read The Martian. Um, I do not currently have one for recommended by a family member. No, I do. That was a lie. I do a book recommended by a family member. I hadn't written it down on my list. I'm reading Motorcycles and Sweet Grass by um, Drew Hayden Taylor. Graphic novel, novel which I did not bring here in here with me, evidently, um, is Neil Gaiman's Sandman, that was illustrated by, um, which was illustrated by the Japanese artist Amano. Uh, who, if you've ever seen the original Vampire Hunter D, you have seen his work. Published in 2016, it's still up in the air, but right now I am planning The Queen of the Night by Al Alexander Shea because it's about opera. A New York Times bestseller, I don't know why I skipped it on the way down, but I'm reading the Welcome to Night Vale novel. Protagonist that has your profession. I am an artist, so that's kind of weird. Um, but I'm reading Lust for Life by Irving Stone. Or at least that's the plan. Uh, takes place during the summer. I'm doing Creation by Catherine 
Govier again, not set in stone, book and its prequel. Right now I'm thinking about doing The Wizard of Oz and, and Wicked. Because I've never went, read Wicked. I've read Wizard of Oz, but I've never read Wicked. Murder Mystery. It's French. Problem. Fair de Lance, which is a Rex Stout novel, and it's basically from the Nero Wolf series. It's the first book of the Nero Wolf series. Nero Wolf is a cognate of Sherlock Holmes, basically, except he's obsessed with beer and orchids and doesn't like to leave his house, and it was he's set during the 20s and in America. Written by a comedian. Again, not something I necessarily want to do, but okay. Uh, I'm, I chose Why Not Me? Why Not Me? by Mindy Kaling because at least she's really cool. Dystopian novel because it's really hard to pick one right now. There is nothing but dystopian novels going on. But I have a copy of Divergent that I have not read, so we're gonna read that. Blue co book with a blue cover. The Little Prince. I've o I own it. I haven't read it. We're gonna do that. And I have the Matisse stories to back it up in case I decide I just can't read it. Poetry. I have a lot of poetry. I, I And I'm leaning towards Gertrude, Gertrude Stein right now. But you never know. I might end up reading Louise Gluck or something. You know, it... it Buddy Wakefield. More Richard Sykin. Who knows? It's up in the air. I do not have a book chosen for first scene in a bookstore yet because I haven't been to a bookstore in a little bit. Um, from the library, I haven't done that yet. Though I was at the library yesterday and I should have done it then, but yeah, I didn't. Autobiography. Not autobiography. Yes, autobiography. If Chins Could Kill. Confessions of a B-movie actor. I love Bruce Campbell. I met Bruce Campbell on this book tour and I have never gotten around to reading this. Like, it's signed by him. So I should read that. Road Trip. An Abundance of Catherines. I hope that counts enough as a road trip. Culture you're unfamiliar with, and I'm looking at either Skins, Contemporary Indigenous Writings, or Daughters of the Dreaming, which is about the women's dreaming in Australian Aboriginal culture. Satirical book. I have Good Omens, which I have not read. So there's a lot of Neil Gaiman going on, on or Neil Gaiman adjacent going on in this year. Takes place on an island. I'm either going to do Shutter Island, which I have a copy of, it's a digital copy, or I'm going to do Liver Braves the Beauty Queens. I, I'm, I'm intrigued by Beauty Queens just because it's like Lord of the Flies with Beauty Queens and women. So yeah. Guaranteed to bring joy. Cold Comfort Farm. They, they made this into a movie, which is amazing and fantastic, and I love the book. So, guaranteed to bring joy. And I kind of have a secondary reading challenge going on, should I manage to get through all of that, which I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, and some of them are overlaps because, you know, I'm a slow reader. So things that were not overlapped like categories were meaning to, been meaning to read is the last unicorn so I've done that I haven't done the local recommended by a local librarian or bookseller should have read in school but did not I'm leaning towards the great Gatsby or Lord of the Flies because I took all Brit lit so American lit just went published before I was born which is basically like half the books on my list Banned at some point. I, I Banned books are just the weirdest thing to me. And the things that get banned are even weirder. But I... But I chose, because I'm of that age, scary stories to tell in the dark. Well, this is technically more scary stories to tell in the dark, but yes. I don't generally abandon books. I get back to them and it just takes me a while. But I chose... Zom zombies versus unicorns because I got I got that far and then stopped for whatever reason which is weird because I like a lot of the the authors in here it's like I I read Sabriel but Garth Nix when it was out the like was first published so you know 
own but haven't read, which <laughs> is everything, but I'm thinking about Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Intimidates you, Middle March. <laughs> so, so, so much Middle March. Um, and a book that, and a book that I've already read once, or at least once, The Sunbird, which this is the worst edition, like, for the cover. It's so not attractive. Um, again, written before I was born, but it's a book my mom gave me in high school to, I'm early in high school, like, freshman maybe, might have been going into freshman year. Um, and it's... An extremely problematic book for a myriad of reasons, but the very things that make it problematic are also the things that it really criticizes at the same time. And the main character is a hunchback. So that is all of the, the things I am planning, planning and plotting to read potentially, and there will be booktubes about them, I hope. And I have a page set up on my my website that's dedicated to the book challenges for this year where I will keep things updated and yeah that is it that is a very very long video too I apologize for that lots and lots and lots of books on the list so I'm going to go and do more things because I actually have booktube things to do now. You'll see the shirt again. And yes, bye.